these albums and behind these movies you know a lot of people come over here saying that they're making beats and that's all you need is a beat and then a microphone for someone to record lyrics over it when in reality it takes a lot more than that um, throughout the process but we're going to be learning that today so there's different phases of the production all right we break it down into three which is the three main categories of a production which is pre-production um, pre-production i'm sorry which is the planning phase you know for anything that you do um you're always going to your uh, or a big event you're always going to have a pre-production um, for any event you know if you are throwing a huge party or wedding or anything like that you know there's a lot of planning involved before the actual event happens so pre-production happens in in all levels of the audio industry um, for albums for movies for game development for anything that has to do with audio there's always a pre-production phase then there's a production phase which is the actual working phase and then there's a post-production and final phase so with the pre-production what do you think will be some of the things that you do in the pre-production um, some of the things that I could tell you are if you're making an album you're doing all of your writing here or most of your writing you're picking you're picking out beats that you're gonna be using for your albums or if it's a, an album that is involving a band you're actually now rehearsing before you actually go into the studio and so it takes a lot of rehearsing it takes a lot of you know pre-production to actually make it happen so this phase we also like to call to call it the planning phase so it's probably the hardest and the most important phase of production right here you are you're also exploring your budget what your budget is looking like for you know your next step which is production you got to see if you can afford your producers if you can afford that actual studio that you want um if the label could get you you know different mixing engineer different um, mastering engineers so the pre-production part of it pretty sure is self-explanatory now to where you could say you know the pre-production part is the hardest part in a production takes a lot of time when it comes to pre-production and the more time you spend in pre-production the better the entire production will come out to be so after you plan or do your pre-production comes the production phase now a lot of people say this is the easiest it all depends but in the production part of of any production actually you're gonna be in any we go on one of the hitting go into the higher keys of the audio industry we're gonna start with how the hierarchy of a studio works so this will be for a major um, studio you will usually have the label the executive producer which is the one in charge of the whole operation pretty much then you have an a and r which the a and r is going to take care of looking for an actual artist and it's going to scout excuse me for new artists and it's going to be you know trying to see if he could find a new artist for the label so how it's going to go it's simple the label is going to pick an executive producer they're going to tell them exactly what they want the executive producer is going to come down to the a and r and tell the A&R, hey, the label wants me to get and um, produce or hire a brand new artist. So we got to be in the lookout for a new artist. And it has to be a teenager, male, um, and a, a bunch of specifications that the label might have on an artist that they're looking for. So the A&R starts looking everywhere for this. Um, they may go into SoundCloud, into YouTube. They may, you know, ask around to a lot of industry friends, network around, and try to find the artist that best fits what the label and the executive producer are looking for. Once that's found, 
the executive producer and the A and R are also going to have a producer in mind that can produce either a single or a entire album for this particular artist. And so the producer is going to be taking care of getting a recording engineer, a mix engineer, and a mastering engineer. Now, when it comes to these engineers, a lot of it, you'll see that the mix engineer can be the recording engineer as well, and then the mastering engineer can be the mix engineer. But if it's a production that has a large budget, then you're going to see that they're going to have a recording engineer and mix engineer and a mastering engineer as well. And then they'll have assistance under all of those categories as well. And so the producer will gather all these engineers and they will make a product. So they will make either an album or a single record where they're going to need all of these different engineers. And then we move on to the studio hierarchy, which is right here. And in the studio hierarchy, we start with an intern, which, you know, most of the times people joke around and say that um, an intern is the coffee maker where, well, you know, we hope mainly this one, the artist does, and does the assist, he knows the, the act process, engineer, and there's something on the lips like. Um, if you want to explore a little bit more, we have this link over here that you could copy. You could pause this video and copy this into your browser and check it out. Um, it's a person, producer, and producer. These people are usually the ones that are giving most of the money for this film or um, whatever it is that they're producing. Um, they're going to be the ones, you know, behind the scenes putting their money investing their money into this actual production. Then you have the directors, which pretty much command everything. They have the vision of what they want. And so they get the editorial team, which is a supervising sound editor, dialogue editor, sound in, um, designer, assistant, sound editor, and an intern. So this is going to look very similar to how in the center here. But it is three different albums with of actually alignment on people here. So now we're actually of the actual production. So very fun stuff here, and there's a lot of work out there that um, you could be hired to potentially, where you could be any of the people here. So. Now we're actually gonna go into assignment 2.3 and a quick little breakdown of this assignment um, just so that you could see an, over, an overlook of it is you're gonna be finding Friday following a due date. So everything was due. Uh, here in our week two resources, we've got a couple of cool interviews. We got a couple articles. This one may get pushed behind a, a paywall. I don't know if this has been updated on our. Oh no, this should be good. Yeah, this is good. Uh, sometimes, sometimes our articles get a little bit older, and uh, it uh, it doesn't um, tell us, and then it gets bumped behind a paywall. Uh, so if if that does happen, um, just let us know. And we'll, we'll find better articles, more updated. <clears throat> so Alice Pickett says your name is not Alice Pickett. Uh, it, it's probably because she, she was the last person to sign on onto your your Zoom account. And why she was zooming? I don't know. Talk to her about that. And let's see, let's see, let's see. So our virtual lecture. Um, again, we have a recorded lecture, except this one is with Juan, and that will get posted there. And for the main topic of discussion is our two assignments. We've got this record production flowchart, which might be one of the more confusing assignments that we have if you have yet to take a look at it. If you have taken a look at it, you might be very confused about what we're asking. That's okay. <clears throat> the point of this assignment is to get you to see all the people 
that are involved in making a successful album. So what we want you to do is look through these categories. So vocal pop, pop, contemporary pop, easy listening, just every, anything and everything, just straight up pop. And then we've got hip hop, rap, R&B, we've got rock and all things rock. That includes country, or that includes um, punk and that includes uh, heavy metal and all the different subgenres there. We've got country, which is like also includes folk and, um, and, and Western and, and the like. Anything electronic music oriented, uh, including dubstep, uh, contemporary Christian gospel, and basically anything orchestral. And if you've got a album like, like Latin that you're just not sure of, or reggae that you're not sure of, just any, any weird genres that you're just like, I don't know where this could go, uh, use this um, in here. That's gonna be our kind of either orchest orchestral stuff or like wild card. <laughs> EDM can we use EBM? I don't know what the B stands for. Oh, industrial, yeah, yeah. In any anything electronic, industrial, um, dubstep, any, you know, just. Um, that can all be included in here. Cool, so pick three of these categories. We know that uh, hip hop, rap, and R&B are completely different genres, but they have the same kind of production methods, so we're lumping them together. We know that punk is completely different than Viking death metal, but we're gonna include those in the same umbrella category. We know, just to kind of parse, so pick three of these categories. Uh, same umbrella category, just to kind of parse things down so it's a little bit easier for us. Cool. So pick three of these categories and find an album from each of them. And if you haven't uh, created a Gmail account, uh, do it. It's 2021. There's no excuse not to, really. Uh, even if you never, ever use it, you will for this assignment. And then you're going to click on this link. And whenever you click on this link, you are not gonna be able to edit anything on it. You can type and type and type and type and type away and nothing will happen. What you need to do is go to file, click on it and make a copy. And then we're gonna save this to our personal uh, Google Drive account. Which is what you 